아! 헬로 에브리원 In this CSS tutorial, we'll take a look at something named Viewport Units. Let's jump right into the demo. So on this example page, we only have a single element, this gray box, which is nothing more than a simple div element. And in terms of the CSS that I've applied, I've given it a width and a height of 100 pixels. Now pixels are probably the most well-known unit of measurement, uh, but instead of pixels, we could also use a percentage, or EM, or REM, or point, or inches, or centimeters, right? You get the idea. There are many, many different units of measurement that we can use. Uh, but one that you might not be familiar with is viewport units. So for example, if I set this to 100 VW, VW stands for viewport width. And if we save this and refresh in the browser, we see that the box takes up 100% of the available browser window width. And if I adjust this to 50 VW, our gray box takes up half of the available viewport width. Now you might be thinking, what's the big deal? Isn't that exactly what percentage values do? Well, not exactly. Percentage values are relative to the nearest parent element. So for example, if we added a second div within this gray box div, let's just do that right now. So within this div, let's add a new div and give it a class of inner, and just say inner box. And then if we target that, and let's give it a background color of orange, and if we give it a width of 100%, we see that that 100% is relative to the gray parent element. So percentage values are relative to the nearest ancestor element. But if we set the orange box to have a width of 100 VW, for viewport width, we see that viewport units are always relative to the browser window or viewport itself. And this is useful for a few reasons. So for example, if you've ever tried to style an element to use the full height of the screen by using height 100%, so let's do that right now. Let's tell the gray box to have a height of 100% we see that that clearly did not work. So using height 100% can get tricky very quickly, and you need to manually adjust the height of the body and HTML elements, or get creative with absolute positioning, or negative margins and overflow hidden, or even resort to JavaScript to get the viewport height value. Uh, it's just a lot trickier than you think it would need to be. But viewport units make things very simple. So if we give this main gray box a height of 100 VH for viewport height, we see that that works flawlessly. So now that we have a general idea of how viewport units work, let's switch over to my second demo page so we can take a look at a few real world examples of when and why viewport units are useful. Let's start with font size. So currently this headline has a font size of 80 pixels. So we want this headline text to be large. And an 80 pixel font size works at this screen size, uh, but what about for smaller screens? For smaller screens, that font size will be too large and the text won't be able to fit on a single line. Now, sizing text to fit on a single line in a responsive environment like this can be very tricky. We would need to create a bunch of different media queries so that every 200 or every 100 pixel increment, we use a slightly smaller and smaller font size. So maybe around this screen size, we use a font size of 60 pixels. And then around this screen size, we switch to use 40 pixel font size. And then 30 pixel font size, you get the idea. That can be very time consuming to set up. And this is actually a great example of when viewport units can save the day. So back in my text editor, I will close this first example page and open up our second demo page. Here is the banner area, and here is that large headline element. Let me open the CSS file that contains the rule that is styling that headline. So here we can see that it has a font size of 80 pixels. So what if we change this from 80 pixels to five viewport width units? So that looks a little bit too small, but notice that when I resize my browser window, 
the font size dynamically changes on the fly to perfectly scale with the size of the viewport. So if five viewport width units was too small, let's try 10 viewport width units. So that's too large. The text no longer fits on a single line. Finding the perfect font size value in this situation can take a bit of trial and error because the perfect value will depend on how many letters or characters we have. So if five was too small and 10 was too large, let's try seven. Looks good. And we can see that when I shrink my window, the font size scales perfectly, even down to a mobile view. So that takes care of our font size. Now let's move on to another viewport units example. Let's say that we want this entire top banner area to take up a certain percentage of the screen's height. Let's imagine we want it to take up about two thirds of the screen vertically. So all we would need to do is find the CSS that targets this div here it is, and we can simply remove its vertical padding and give it a fixed height value. So two thirds is about 67%. So let's say 67 viewport height units. And it's that easy. So we see that even if I adjust the height of the window, that banner area scales to always take up two thirds. However, on a slightly unrelated, slightly related note, uh, we now see that the headline is no longer vertically centered. It was centered before because we were letting the banner div shrink wrap its height to fit the headline and then adding equal amounts of padding above and below it. But now that we are forcing the banner div to use a fixed height, we need to find a different way to make the headline look like it's vertically centered. So here's what I would do. Back in our CSS, let's tell the headline to be positioned absolutely. And we want it to be positioned in relation to its parent element. So let's tell the parent div to have position relative. And then back on our heading element, let's tell it to use the full available width. So width 100%. And let's position it to sit down from the top 50%. So we can see that the very top edge of the text is sitting in the perfect vertical center of the banner, but the text as a whole is sitting down a bit too far. To make it perfectly centered, we would need to pull it up half of its own height. So to do that, we can say transform and then use the translate Y function. And to pull an element up half of its own height, we can just say negative 50%. Perfect, so now it's vertically centered again. So this looks good for larger screens, but maybe we decide that on smaller screens, we want the banner area to take up 100% of the vertical space. So to make that happen, all we would need to do is change the hero banner to have a height of 100 viewport height units, and then just create a media query that only targets screens that are at least 600 pixels or wider. I'm just making up this breakpoint threshold. You could choose whatever you'd like. Uh, but for screens that are at least this wide, we'll just target the hero banner again and reset its height to 67 viewport height units. So now smaller mobile screens will let the banner use the full amount of limited real estate. But larger screens will use our original two thirds vertical styling. Perfect. Now, before we bring this lesson to a close, I know that some of you might be thinking that viewport units are useful, but what is browser support like? What about older legacy browsers? Well, as of today, about 83% of browser traffic supports viewport units but we don't want to leave the other 17% of people out in the cold. And luckily implementing a fallback is super easy. So here's what we do. Anytime we use viewport units, we can just duplicate that declaration. And the first copy will be our insurance policy. So in the first copy, let's pretend that viewport units don't exist. So we can say height 500 pixels. So this will cover our bases for older legacy web browsers. 
and then we just include another height declaration. And only in browsers that support viewport units will this override this value. So we would do the same thing for the font size on the heading element. So we would duplicate this font size declaration. And on the first copy, we would say maybe font size 40 pixels. And then in the second copy, we can use viewport units. So long story short, feel free to start using viewport units in your designs today. Browser support is great, but not perfect. But as you can see, the fallback is very simple to set up. Anyways, that's going to bring this lesson to a close. Thank you so much for watching this week's video. I hope you feel like you learned something. And stay tuned for a new episode next Tuesday. Huh? Go. If you haven't already, be sure to check out my brand new Get a Web Developer Job Mastering the Modern Workflow course. As always, there's a link to it in the description.